Так, а я у тебя может, да, да, махала с гастой. А ты до девал тарали, а ты бомбишь я вакра бала, но может берта сорся ула. Сара урак шел. Бей, а ты бомбари гир, что может да пида кровара мы. Может да талибане мухи, ой на скова, ой, ой, на сегодня на скова, ой, где аж касай то поквала раз да кирите. Может на сувар тавай лаши да, может покрыли мади с джанг мы жору. Ларс пе укреки жору, к ковар тува, ой там да вовар хвай да сия чак чак ули. А в я тогда да сапатур джумани да испуштана ва ковар, но тавай че за дашпе патария ки за станвину. Но че станвину но тавай да хвали дашман на вали, вали шузи кучнян вали. НАТО has come under heavy criticism from Afghans over its efforts to protect the population from the president down. Yet the anger might well be directed elsewhere. Our data shows that over 80% of civilian casualties that occur in Afghanistan are caused by the insurgency. So what does NATO do to protect the population? This is the JOC, the Joint Operations Cell at ISAF headquarters in Kabul. Here, every violent incident, every controversial issue is reported and investigated evidence of increased efforts to protect the population. Now it's ISAF's defining ambition. We have two procedures. One is to achieve a positive uh, identification of the, uh, the area uh, under which the fire is, uh, is uh, generating and uh, the, the second is a pattern of life. So we try and assure ourselves that the area is, uh, is clear of civilians. But we have to understand that the insurgents use civilians to provide themselves some, some form of protection. When there are potential civilian casualties from air or ground strikes, Colonel Mark Kelly is on the case to ascertain the exact circumstances. He testifies to the accuracy of weapons used by ISAF. When we talk about how accurate the weapon can hit, we're talking in small numbers of meters. We're not talking miles or uh, hundreds of yards or anything, but generally, you know, with, within a, a room-sized area. The final part of the equation is how those in the air feed details to the forces taking decisions on the ground. We keep them completely informed of that all the time so that both us in the air and our friendly forces troops on the ground are aware with all the civilians are, even in the most dynamic of uh, situations. The issue has put ISAF at odds with just about everyone, Afghans, the UN, NGOs. Yet it carries out investigations, acknowledges mistakes and defends its findings. Its case? that NATO is an honest, not a negligent contributor to security in Afghanistan. Many of my colleagues in the NGO community have prejudices, whether warranted or not, against anybody in uniform. They cannot believe that they could possibly be telling them the whole truth, even though the man in uniform, or woman in uniform, is telling them the truth as far as they personally know it. In a wider sense, truth is at the heart of the issue for Afghans too. They lived in the shadow of the grand designs of outsiders for centuries, first British, then Soviet. Is the expanding presence of the world's most powerful military coalition now another chapter of the same book? Or is there something different, more mutually beneficial at play here? The basic thing would be to when the minds and hearts of these people first, uh, make uh, a sincere relationship with these people so that they can trust you. The first priority of the new commander of ISAF, it's not about the fighting, it's about the people on whose behalf you're fighting. The Afghan people are at the center of our mission. In reality, they are our mission. We must protect them from violence, whatever its nature. NATO is trying to break through the suspicions and generate a spirit of trust and honest intent. One reason why military and civil provincial reconstruction teams, operating under ISAF's flag and engaged in medical, educational and building projects, are so active across the country. Surobi Valley, like Wazir near the Pakistani border, has seen plenty of insurgent movement recently and threat to the local population. No better way to restore the balance than by treating the sick in an informal surgery, all part of an effort to engage with the local people through their structures observing their cultural traditions. In the comparatively safer northern part of Afghanistan, Swedish soldiers get out mixing with local people on mission to distribute school materials. In the process, the village teacher 
and the Swedish team leader, Lieutenant David Bergman, son of a teacher himself back home, discover a shared love for education and reading. Today we have 44.6% of the Afghan population is below the age of 16 and that is going to be the large, uh, the large future of Afghanistan. Uh, reading makes a country great and if uh, the security is enough for the children to go to school we have come a long way in our work. Here in Badakhshan in the northeast there is less insurgent activity to contend with and the Germans are trying to keep it that way. There's nothing spectacular about a bridge building project in a country torn by war, yet here it serves many purposes. When it's finished, it will take hours, not days, to reach families across the river. Last year, nine people drowned trying to cross the river during its peak flow in early summer. And it rebuilds the local economy. The Germans are often envied, sometimes criticized for what many see as an unjustly quiet life in the north. But commanders see their role as vital to reconstruction and security. Wir haben Provinzen, in denen wir wirklich schon mit dem Aufbau begonnen haben. Wir haben andere, in denen im Wesentlichen Schmuggelaktivitäten durchgeführt werden, wo wir mit kriminellen Banden zu tun haben. Wir haben andere, in denen wir die Insurgents bekämpfen. Aber dass wir erfolgreich gewesen sind, liegt daran, dass wir tatsächlich es geschafft haben, in einzelnen Provinzen eine Voraussetzung zu schaffen, dass der wirtschaftliche Aufbau wieder vorangehen kann. Reconstruction, or the lack of it, has been a constant refrain for the past few years. But it's not that Afghanistan has stood still since. At the city centre shopping mall in Kabul, retail outlets have something of the air-conditioned opulence of the Gulf about them. Clear, if small, evidence of economic advance. This gold trader returned home from the UK because opportunities were so much better here than in London. For Mahmoud Wali, a travel consultant too, it's all about space for opportunity. Had, uh, opportunity and facilities which we didn't had uh, like uh, 10 or 7 years ago that right now we have the education is the best thing in the world because education is backbone of a country. This is the real measure of success that NATO has set for itself in Afghanistan. You judge it through people and through the opportunities they're able to enjoy. Through a nation of talented and resourceful individuals, not through the distorting prism of insurgency. It's an ambitious, multi-dimensional project that will take many years to complete, but it will last. Most important of all, it will be owned and run by the people of Afghanistan themselves. <laughs>